Our program simplepick.c included the header file xc.h, which is a file provided by Microchip in its software distribution. And if we dig through the Microchip software distribution, we'll see that xc.h is sitting in a directory applications microchip xc32 version 1.4 pick 32 mx include. Now the directory might look slightly different for you, in particular the version number, but it's going to have this same general form. So to see what xc.h we can open up that file, XC, to see what xc.h does, we can open up that file. And we see what it does is it's just checking to see if certain constants have been defined. And if those constants are defined, then it further includes another header file. Now, when we compiled our program, we used a command minus m processor equals 32mx795f512h. And that actually defined a constant in the compilation procedure, which now xc.h is looking for. It's telling xc.h which type of processor we have. So let's go ahead and look for our processor type here. And we can see it right here. Here's our processor type. And since this constant was defined when we invoked the compilation process, we're including this file. So now let's go take a look at that file to see what it does. This is a big file. Uh, in fact, if we jump to the bottom of this file, we can see here that it's about 40,000 lines long. Okay. So there's a lot happening in this file. And what's actually happening primarily in this file is that all of those special function registers that we got to use in our program without defining them or declaring them are declared in this file. So let's go ahead and take a look for trisf, which we use in our program, simple pick. OK. So here we're seeing, uh, don't worry about the extern volatile, et cetera, but basically we are declaring an unsigned int called trisf. So this is the de declaration of the variable name that we are now using in our simple pick program. And in addition to this 32-bit unsigned integer uh, variable being defined, trisf, we're also defining a new data type. And that's what's happening in these lines here, this type def union down the trisf bits underscore t. So what we're doing here is we're actually defining a new data type called trisf bits underscore t. And what this data type does is it allows us to access individual bits of actually the same memory address where trisf is sitting. So in particular, uh, if we were to define something of type trisf bits underscore t, then we can refer to bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, bit 4, bit 5. This is called a bit field. And it tells us um, what bits are actually implemented by microchip, which bits we're allowed to use. So if we come down here, after we define this data type called trisf bits underscore t, now we're defining a variable called trisf bits of type trisf bits underscore t. And this is the variable that we're allowed to use trisf bits dot trisf zero, for example. Uh, and that's accessing individual bits of the bit field that we're defining up here. Now, in addition to the 32-bit integer, the individual access to the bits of that same 32-bit integer, uh, many special function registers have associated with them a clear special function register, a set special function register, and an invert special function register. And what these do is they allow you to clear individual bits or set individual bits or invert individual bits of the special function register without touching the other bits. Um, so you'll learn more about that when uh, you read through the chapters. So this is where we've defined or declared the variables that we're now allowed to use in our program. One other thing that's interesting, let's uh, look for trisf further down in the file. 
And what you actually see here is assembly code. So we don't really have to concern ourselves with it. But we can see here uh, TRIS-F has, in its comment next to it, it has the virtual memory address of TRIS-F. So if you were to consult the data sheet, you would see that these virtual memory addresses line up with what's on the data sheet. Now, we still haven't yet connected, say, the variable TRIS-F to a specific virtual memory address. All we've done in this file is to declare that TRISF exists so we can use it in our C code. But when we compile our program and then link it, we're linking it with a processor.o file, again, provided by microchip. And this, our object code gets linked with the processor.o file specific to our model. And in that processor.o file are specific virtual memory addresses for TRISF, for example. So when we use TRISF, it finally gets resolved to a specific address in memory, specific location in the PIC32's memory map when it gets linked with processor.o. And that's how when we write something to TRISF, it actually shows up at the right memory location on the PIC32 because processor.o is telling the, the linker where it exists.